Welcome everybody to today's presentation. Um, my name is Mark Clark. I'm the Vice President of the Marketing for Advanced Data Systems. And of course, this is something that's on everyone's mind today, or should be, and it's all about you know ransomware and how to prevent a ransomware attack, which is something you absolutely want to avoid. Okay, you know, before we get into it, just a, a little bit about who we are, who Advanced Data Systems is. We have a 40-year track record uh, of automating medical practices and revenue cycle management companies with systems that do automated practice management, electronic health records. We have a system specifically for radiology. That's our risk system. We're privately owned. We're debt-free. Um, and we service medical practices and RCM companies of basically every size and specialty. And so, of course, if you have some interest in software such as ours, we would love to speak to you about that. But that is not why we're here today. We're here today to talk about ransomware. Uh, I, again, just so everybody has a, has a clue about us, we have 200 employees you know, based in our own building outside of uh, New York City in Paramus, actually in Paramus, New Jersey. We have thousands, tens of thousands of physicians and system users that use our systems. Okay. Enough about us. The reason we're all here today is to hear about ransomware and what you can do about preventing preventing it. And the presenter is Fernando Sosa. And just a word about him. Fernando is the managing partner at Worry Free MD. Uh, Worry Free MD is a healthcare IT support company. They have 100% HIPAA trained staff, and they provide on-site comprehensive HIPAA risk assessments that are guaranteed to stand up to any government audit or review. So they really know what they're doing. They specialize in working with independent medical practices, and um, of course they put a, a, a big value on employee productivity, cybersecurity, HIPAA compliance, and so on. And so, let's turn it over to Fernando, and Fernando will take us through what ransomware is all about and why you want to avoid it. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Mark, for the introduction. And uh, so let's uh, let's get started. I um, you seeing my screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm going to skip this slide. Mark did a great job on that. Uh, my name is Fernando Sosa, and here is the agenda for today. So this is a quick webinar, quick thirty-minute webinar. We're going to learn about about ransomware. Uh, how, how to protect yourself and what to do in the event that uh, you do get uh, infected with this. Um, so it's going to be um, high level. If you have any questions, keep them coming, type them in the chat box, and we'll get to them at the end. If we don't have enough time, we'll follow up, and uh, we'll definitely answer all your questions. Okay? So basically, like Mark said, ransomware is pretty much everywhere. And if you've been listening or watching the news, you've, you've heard about it, uh, ransomware. Um, it's on the paper, it's on TV, it's happening to hospitals, it's happening to all types of uh, uh, businesses, and healthcare is affected a lot by ransomware. Last year was a uh, was pretty significant uh, year for ransomware because uh, uh, these criminals they're making uh, a killing. They're 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 making a lot of money out of off of this, and for that for that reason, they're, they're just going to continue as an ongoing uh, threat. So it's good that you're on this webinar. Uh, to learn a little bit about this, but you have to take action afterwards and share what you learned and apply what you learn here. Uh, because this one, one out of five businesses, uh, statistics show that I'm going to get attacked uh, with a ransomware threat. So how does ransomware infection happen? Just uh, some basics here in case you're not familiar. Ransomware is just software. Okay? Like a software that runs on your computer, ransomware is software that is created by criminals. Okay? So these criminals develop these software, and the intent of the software is to take your data and encrypt it, lock it, make them unreadable. And the only way that you can read or get your, your data back is if you pay money to these criminals. So that's the bottom line. Ransomware is software that gets somehow gets installed on your computer, and once it runs, it encrypts and makes all your data files, everything, unreadable. 
And the only way for you to get it is either you pay the ransom or you just lose it. Or if you're if you have a, a, a some other solution that we're going to talk about with a little later on in, in terms of backups and that sort of thing. So that's what that's that's basically what ransomware is. And uh, and the the, the 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 biggest problem is that it doesn't just affect your computer. It can, it affects all the computers that are connected in the same network. So if you have files saved on your computer. If your computer is mapped to the server and it has a shared folder, if the folder on your computer is synced to the cloud, uh, those, 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 those files also get encrypted. So it's not just a single incident on one computer. Your whole network and everything connected to the network uh, gets infected. So, um, okay, so as you see, here's a simple example I'm going to go over. There's many ways for you to get infected. This is one simple example, but it's the most common example okay, that has to do with, with email and attachments or links that have malware uh, um, linked to it. Here's a screenshot of a Word document that has, uh, once you open a Word document, you open many, many Word documents probably during the day or during the week. You open a Word document that somehow you got, and I'll get to that somehow later, but you somehow got this Word document. It has a message to enable the content, enable macros. You go ahead and, narrate, and, and without thinking about it twice, you click on enable content, boom. You're, you're infected with the ransomware, and then it starts working in the background. You may not notice nothing, anything different. You continue working. And the thing about ransomware is that it works in the background. Once you get infected, you don't know you have the ransomware until it's finished doing damage. And when it's finished doing the damage, you're going to get a, a message come up that, uh, that tells you that you've been infected, that, that, you've been, that, that your data is encrypted, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to show you in the next slide an example. So this is one example of a screen that comes up after you're infected with the ransomware. So basically, it, it, like, I, like I said, there's many types of ransomware software. And uh, so this is just one example. Uh, basically, it boils down to the same. All your files are encrypted. You have a certain amount of time left to pay the ransom. Otherwise, your files will, will be destroyed. That's the bottom line. So they give you a deadline, and they tell you if, if you don't pay, you're going to get, you're never going to recover the files. So that's, that's basically how it goes. So, and this is it. It's very, very kind of simple if you think about it. But that's, that's how, and it works. And I think because it's simple, it works so, so, so well. Um, so, it, yeah, like I said, last year was a huge year for ransomware. And, uh, you know, it cost upwards to $75 billion in downtime. So that's, that's huge for, for small businesses. And uh, it really depends how you calculate the, your cost of downtime. When you have downtime, if you're if you're down for one hour, a uh, couple of hours, a day, a week, you know how how much money does that cost you? You know, so that's that's the impact of ransomware and how it's uh, been affecting these businesses. So a couple of statistics here. Of the, so let now it's very interesting. One out of four ransomware incidents are not reported uh, uh, are reported to authorities. So this, what this means is that. All the statistics that you hear about ransomware, it, it, these are just the ones that, that, that are reported, the ones you know about. But there's more that, more happening out there than when you actually hear about. Um, so by industry, like I said, it's affecting all types of industries, not just healthcare. You got the professional services, like the law firm, the accounting firm. Uh, healthcare is, is, is very up, uh, up, up there. And then construction and manufacturing are the top, top three industries uh, hit. Um, the the interesting stat is that 35% of ransomware attacks uh, are on cloud-based applications, including Google Apps and Office 365. Uh, even in 70% are from a Dropbox being targeted. So this is very interesting because, like I said before, even if you have your files in the cloud, those can be also attacked and, and uh, uh, with with the ransomware. Because if you think about it, the files get to the cloud first; they're on your computer. If your computer gets encrypted, the data gets encrypted, it gets synchronized to the cloud, so now your, your files in the cloud are encrypted and so on. So, um, so it, it's not just enough to have your, your, your backups in the cloud. There's also you have to think about it, um, this being a problem because it does uh, replicate and go upwards as well. Um, and then we have here that 93% of uh, our ransomware, they infiltrate antivirus. It's not just antivirus is not enough. That you, you can't just rely on, oh, I have an antivirus program running. I'm okay. That's like the minimum. That's, that's, 
That's very basic. It's not even a baseline. It's very minimal. There's different layers of security that have to that you have to have, um, and antivirus is just one layer. Uh, so uh, all this all this ransomware that's happening, all these people they do have antivirus. Some may not, but it, it, it does happen even if you have a ran even if you have an antivirus antivirus software. So that's uh, important for you to understand. So the most common uh, uh, ransomware that you hear about is, is one called Crypto Locker. And, and, and 95 percent is of IT providers report that this is the most common uh, ransomware out there. And uh, so you'll hear a lot about Crypto Locker, but there's also variations of Crypto Locker. So they have Crypto Locker and then another name to it. And each one acts differently because they, they're either authored by somebody else or by different people, or, they're, or they copy how it works and they, they tweak it. So it's like a cat and mouse game. You know, you learn about one, and then another one gets updated and revised, and then the you know the, the people have to learn how the new ones operate. Uh, but crypto locker is, is pretty much the, the king of ransomware. So the so number one cause of uh, ransomware infection that I mentioned before it 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 email phishing email is high up on the list. Uh, Forty six percent of IT providers claim phishing emails, and and like the example that I gave you. Of a, of a Word document that you that you open, and it has a, 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 a that it's infected. That Word document could have come attached to an email, or it could have or could have been downloaded from some other place. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of a, of a phishing email. Phishing phishing emails are emails that you receive from that you that you receive that are faking where it comes from. They look like they're coming from a place that you know but they're not really coming from that place. So for example, you might get an email that looks like it's coming from the post office or from the IRS or from FedEx, but it's not really coming from those places. And they, they trick you into clicking on the link and then it takes you somewhere. Or they, they trick you into opening a, a document. Let's say for example, tax season, you get a, 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 an email from the IRS and it says your tax is re, returned. Or your bank, or your bank statement, or some other vendor sends you an email or something, or an invoice, and you open it. And so that's an example of a phishing email. Uh, uh, and 36% uh, are blaming bad training or poor training on, on, on uh, employees. This is a big one, and it's a very easy to fix. Employees that are not trained, they'll have awareness, security awareness, basic awareness of, of how things work. How, what not to click? What how emails are look suspicious? That saves a lot of a lot of effort, a lot of a uh, uh, grief. If 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 employees have some basic uh, training on cybersecurity, it's kind of like driving. You know, you might know how to, you might be a driver. You have a driver's license. Uh, you need to have a basic you know basic skills to drive a car. You need to take a test and and you know it's just basic basic. It doesn't mean that you're a race car driver. You know you don't need to. You just need to know some basic things. And, and this helps a lot in, in, in the fight against uh, uh, ransomware. So here's an example of, a, of, of an email that is a phishing attack. And uh, take a look at this. Here, this email looks like it's coming from Office 365. Uh, it, says, it, it says, you know, your message has been quarantined. You know, click on this link uh, to continue. It's a basic example. Um, there's some signs here that, that this is suspicious. The, the subject, the, um, the the from says something with IKEA. That's the red flag right away. But some, but you might look at it, look at the logo, and click on it right away without even thinking about it. It has your name on it. I, I, I erased it there. You click on the link, and then it takes you to a site that is infected with malware, and that's it. You have the ransomware. And once you have the ransomware, it, it goes through your network and it spreads, and all of, and and then the next, uh, you know. A couple of hours, your whole network is down or is infected. So that's an example of how that of how how uh, that happens. So so how uh, bad can can it be for business? Well, ask yourself that question. What can, what can you do without your data? Okay, the data is one of the biggest assets that you have, and if you can't have your data, I mean that's a huge impact. So 60% uh, report that ransomware leads to 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 threatening downtime. Uh, you know it. it how long, like I said, if, how, can, how can you be down for a couple of days and not affect your business? So there's a, a huge impact on businesses. 48% report that they, they, they lose their critical data as a result. 
So it's, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot to lose. So let's go over a couple of things. I have a checklist here, a prevention checklist. And so the first one that I have on my list is spam email. Like I said already, email is the highest one on the list. And um, you, you basically when emails come in, they look suspicious, they're phishing emails, and um, they trick you into clicking a, into clicking a link. And it's so so easy because people live in their inbox and they get emails all the time. So this is a big problem and how in a big area that you need to look at. Um, in order to prevent these ransomware attacks in your email. It could be on your security, in your security system, your technology, spam filtering, and, and, and other technology solutions I'm not going to get into. But that's, but that's a, a pretty high on the list. The other one has to do with passwords. Well, passwords uh, are, are so easy to address. There's so many, this is a big problem with, with having simple passwords, uh, sharing passwords, not having security policies in place where you have to change password every couple of days, every you know, 60 days or whatnot. This is a simple thing that can be done and it helps you in all your systems in order to prevent an attack. Because uh, when you're sharing passwords or you have passwords that are weak, they're easily uh, uh, easily um, uh, breached. And uh, you know, other, there's other types of security policies. And, and this, all, this all gets covered when you're doing a HIPAA risk assessment, by the way, which I'll talk later. Um, so having, uh, you know, even even to the point where you want to deny USB USB uh, uh, chips or memory cards or USB drives are being plugged into computers, that's also some type of a policy that you can that you can have for these portable devices that to prevent them from being added or, or entered into your into your drive into your computer. So password is a big area here to look at. Um, the other one is computer updates. Computer updates, computers need to be updated all the time. And not just computers, but your servers, your firewall. The reason why these updates need to take place is because software has, has uh, first of all, they get updated by the vendors to add features and functions, but, some, but sometimes they add uh, uh, issues to them that get uncovered later on. And there's vulnerabilities. And then these hackers discover these vulnerabilities, and they create these viruses that attack them, or malware that attack them. So then they need, the vendor needs to update the software. And so it's, again, it's a cat and mouse chase. And software that is old or outdated, they do not get updated because they're end of support. The vendor does not support that. And that happens with software, like your, your, your operating system, uh, your, your, your office application, everything uh, that, that uh, 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 is installed on your computer usually has updates. And when the vendor says, that's it, I'm not going to update anymore, you have to upgrade it. Because otherwise, you're not going to get the security updates that you need to keep it up to date. This happens also in addition as well with your firewall. I see in many practices that you have that they have a firewall in place, but they're not updated. They don't have the security updates, and there's usually a cost for that with the vendor, with the with the firewall vendor, to keep to keep it up to date. Otherwise, it's just it just has old old prevention mechanisms. It's not up to date. So that's very important to prevent these types of attacks. Then the next one, like I mentioned, is training. Your staff needs to be trained, and it's not an extensive training. It's just some basic basic skills to uh, to to be aware of these issues that, that are prevalent. Um, and you know, even attending a webinar similar like this gets them aware, raises their awareness. Um, there's also the HIPAA training and, and 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 other other types of training that that uh, that you can have. But training is very important and is very easy. It's not even a technology uh, thing to do. It's just training. It's just a know-how. Advanced security is next on the list. Now, this one, uh, you, probably, you probably need to defer to your IT provider because it gets more technical and more involved. And uh, you know, it, this goes beyond like the antivirus. It goes beyond uh, the simple solutions. It's not just about the tools. You need to have somebody understand what's going on when there's something, when there's warning signs. Somebody that, that checks your firewall actually uh, checks the log. Having a firewall and nobody's checking it, it, you know, that's where you need to have somebody look at the, you know, at the log and see if something is actually happening. So, so it gets a little bit more involved, more involved, and advanced security, uh, and because it's advanced, it's the most, it's the most, uh, the one that's most lacking. Firewall, basic firewall. You have to have at least, at least, uh, not a bit, not a basic firewall, but you have to have at least a firewall in place because that's your first line of defense from the outside. Right? So, uh, again, firewalls need to be updated. 
Uh, and it's not enough just to have an off-the-shelf firewall that you get in, in, a, in, a, in a store, in a, you know, like Staples or something like that. You need to have something adequate for your business, not a home office, uh, not a home, uh, a home uh, uh, a firewall, something that has the advanced security in place that could protect you from these advanced threats. So um, the next one we have on the list is encryption. Encryption is your safe harbor, okay? Under HIPAA high tech, if your data gets breached and it, it's encrypted, it's not considered a reportable breach. So uh, encryption is very important for you because, it, 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 it again, it, it, it saves you from, the, from that uh, problem of being a reportable breach. If you encrypt your data, especially you need to encrypt your mobile devices, your phones, your tablets, your laptop, um, and even your desktop, it, because uh, uh, that is a big line of defense to prevent uh, people from accessing your data. And it, it doesn't really prevent you from the from ransomware because it can still be affected by the ransomware. However, um, even though you're dealing with the ransomware, because it's in, because you encrypt your data, it's not going to be considered a reportable breach. And uh, HHS recently released a, uh, a guidance that, saying that ransomware attacks are uh, reportable. So you have to report a ransomware attack. But if it's encrypted, then in that case, it falls under the safe harbor because it's not, you know, the, the users, the, the criminals cannot uh, use the, uh, the data. So uh, the other one I have here is the HIPAA risk assessment. And I mentioned that before. A risk assessment is your annual ob obligation uh, by HHS to do uh, on, a, uh, on your office. Basically, the risk, HIPAA risk assessment it could be risk as called the risk assessment, uh, security risk analysis, uh, HIPAA risk analysis, we're talking about the same thing. That basically go, goes into your office and you, you, you check, you make an assessment of your whole office, your including of technology, your policies and procedures, your privacy, everything. And uh, um, it, basically this helps you uncover any risks that you have in your, in your practice. And all of these checklists here, you actually look at will, will, will be uncovered in a comprehensive risk assessment. Not all risk assessments are the same. Uh, risk assessment is not just a checklist. The point of, uh, of the risk assessment is to uncover risk. If you're just filling out a checklist, you're not really checking the network and checking all these things. You're not really uh, protecting yourself or, or preventing these things from happening. So a uh, comprehensive risk assessment is your first step towards HIPAA compliance. And that's how you prevent a lot of these things from happening if it's a, if it's a good risk assessment. If you look at the press releases of, of of attacks that have happened, and HHS puts out these releases, a lot of them cite, inc uh, cite um, a poor, uh, uh, inadequate risk assessment done, and that's why they, they got uh, hacked. So the last one on the list I have here is backup. And this backup is what I will call my uh, a backup insur uh, uh, ransomware insurance, to sort of speak. Insurance in a way that, um, you know, insurance is meant to help you after the fact, right? So with backup, if you if all if everything goes you know falls through and you still get attacked, what is your fallback plan? How do you recover? And that's where backup comes into play. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily prevent you, but it helps you come back to from a problem like this. And not all backups are the same, so uh, that's another thing. The word backup gets used very loosely in the industry, and you might think and you might see it as a marketing term, and it's not necessarily a comprehensive backup solution that will help you when you need it the most. A lot of practices I, I've seen, uh, they, they, they think they have a backup running, they, but they never test it. They never actually re-restore the data to see if it actually works. And, and that's kind of like doing a fire drill. You do fire drills to know that you have the, the, the process in place, to know what, what to do in the case of the emergency. So backups is the same thing. You have to test these backups because when you have a problem, an emergency, that's not the time for you to do a drill, right? That's not the time for you to do the test. So these backup solutions, uh, uh, you have to be able to recover from ransomware and uh, not all backup solutions will help you with that. So that's also very important for you to, 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 to check on your list to have a comprehensive backup solution. Uh, we can help you with all of this, by the way, but I um, just want to point this out to you. So what can you do? So uh, according to Homeland Security, the, 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 the number one solution to prevent if, if it happens, because the thing is, there's no 100% uh, guarantee that 
you won't get ransomware. Even if you take all the precautions necessary, there's no 100%. So that means you have to have a backup and disaster recovery solution as the other layer of protection, okay? So it's every, you have to have everything to protect yourself, but you have to have the good backup solution in place uh, in the event that the worst thing happens and you're able to recover. So that's my uh, checklist here. I'm just going to put it back again here. So that's very important for you to understand. Uh, don't forget to put some questions. If you have questions, I, I'm almost uh, uh, done here. But um, uh, spam email, password, computer update, training, advanced security, firewall, HIPAA, HIPAA risk assessment, encryption, and backup. These are all will help you if you address these in these areas. Um, like I said, the number one and the easy and the common one is the spam and the phishing emails. Passwords is very easy to fix, very easy to address. Training is, is very easy to address. Okay, the rest you might need help from your provider, uh, but these are how to prevent from these ransomware attacks that are happening every single day. So the next step for you will be, you know, share what you've learned. Now that you, you know, congratulate you to for attending and participating, watching this webinar either now or a recording. So take action. Share this. Uh, implement some some action steps in your office. Reach out to your IT provider or reach out to us for any help and anything that we talked about. And don't be a victim. There's a download there that you can download for so, uh, these checklists. Uh, just go to this link and you can download this checklist. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to open it up to Q and A. I have a couple of questions here. Uh, I'm not sure there's more on the on the webinar. Let me see more. Um, I also have a, a, a webinar special that I'm just going to try out uh, just for the live attendees. Before I get into the question, usually for the risk assessment, we do risk assessments for $1,500 just for the webinar. We're going to leave it for $1,199. But if you're live, uh, I'm going to give you the offer of $799. For the, for the risk assessment if you respond within 24 hours. And if that's a, a problem, we'll split it into three payments of 267 So that's just for the live attendees as a way of saying thank you. This is for 24 hours. So let me go into the questions I have here. So only, um, that's the only, I only visited trusted sites. Am I still at risk? Okay, so, so some practices have, uh, uh, they, they don't browse the internet or they, uh, they they, they don't even have emails they're saying here. Okay, yeah, you're, you're still at risk because you may be safe uh, uh, on your end, but uh, the coworkers that you have in your office, or unless you're by yourself, right, and you're know, one person, but if you have other coworkers, they can have this problem on their end, or they can get an email from somebody else, or they can visit a website, okay, from somebody else, and uh, uh, there is something called drive-by downloads, which is you're visiting websites, and they could be legitimate websites, but the websites are that can can be infected as well. So you can be visiting a website, and the website can download a, a malware onto your computer. So that's one way to get infected. You don't necessarily need to um, check email to get infected, and it could be a trusted website. But even a trusted website can infect it. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Type. Um, let me hear myself. Skype, if you use Skype, for example, Skype has an, the free version. Skype has an advertisement uh, on a little banner. Uh, that was reported not too long ago that one of these banners was, was, was infected with a malware. So if somebody clicked on the banner on Skype, it actually got infected with some malware and got kind of redirected somewhere. So there's many, many, many ways of, to get infected. So yes to that question. The other question is, if I don't have uh, an email, can I still be, okay, that's similar to the first one. Uh, the other one, what to do if infected with ransomware? Okay, so if you suspect that you, got, that you get infected, uh, that's a good question. The, the first thing that you should do is unplug the, the computer from the network. Okay, don't necessarily turn it off uh, because that will not uh, help uh, in the uh, recovery or the attempt of recovery, it won't help. You want, to base, you want to unplug it from the network so it doesn't spread if, 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 that, if that's what you think that happened. And of course, you want to follow up with your IT provider. That, that's one way to help them uh, that, so that doesn't spread. It. Unplug it from the network uh, and uh, give your IT, IT person a call. You know, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll get the copy of the presentation out. Um, if you have any uh, questions about 
uh, advanced data systems, our products or services, you know, you can contact us at either info at ADSC.com or you can call us at 800-899-4237, extension 2264. And, uh, of course, you can uh, also learn a lot by visiting our website at uh, www.adsc.com. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Fernando for a great uh, webinar, and uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, I hope you all have a great weekend, and uh, thank you so much.